we're back with industry season two. And it's a chance to look at the various types of sales in financial markets. This brings back a lot of memories. The conference is a good place to try to pick up a client that will be very hard to reach otherwise, like Bloom. Just hit me up with a six one. That was great. And offering research is one of the things you can do. By the way, we've just published our macro yearhood predictions. I'm sorry, do you have any idea how often salespeople bring me reams of immaterial material? Although it doesn't usually work. I'm just not interested in people who comment on the direction of the wind. I'd, I'd much prefer if you could make it blow. Harper uh, here um, clearly had the same pitch in mind, but... Uh, actually, I'm... Uh, thank you equity. for coming. She is smart enough to realize it's pointless. We've reserved the box at Anfield. A second approach is entertainment. For you and Leo, this Friday, Derby Day under the lights. John Henry's a close friend. It's a tactic that's more for brokers than investment banking sales. Time for a personal anecdote. I was never a broker, but I worked at a structured product desk inside a brokerage firm. One day, the big boss made company-wide announcement, and this was very rare. He said that our entertainment expenses were down. And I thought it was a good thing because low expenses are good, right? But he was not happy about it. In fact, he was going on and on about all the amazing entertainment package we had and that not enough people were using. And that's because he knew that in an industry that's mainly about execution, it's very difficult to differentiate and client entertainment brings business. This is less and less the case, I think, and clearly it doesn't work with Boom. Um, yeah, okay, thank you. But let's recap in terms of what a sales can offer. It depends on which department they're in. If you're into flow or brokerage, it's about research, sometimes access to companies management. And entertainment is a very big part because it's just about who you want to trade with and the pricing will be non-differentiated. Appreciate it. Um... Hey, good luck with everything. If you're in structure sales, so it's more like Arbor's jobs, ideas matter more. The competitiveness of the pricing will be key because there are differences. And also, can you bring in some opportunities like we will see very soon with the block trade? Let's move on to private banking and compare it to the trading floor. Um, lots of flow slash execution stuff, but I would love to learn more about private wealth management. It's ugly work market-facing roles. There's nothing elegant in that part of the business. It's an interesting use of words. She calls it market-facing, implying she is client-facing, but they're both facing clients. And in some ways, they are very similar. It's a personal service. They are paying us to be at the end of a phone, to take them out for dinner, to make them feel safe. However, the approach is different. First, you've got to look at the incentives. Private wealth manager is paid by a fixed fee on the assets under management, but they also have an incentive to make the client trade. Investment returns are steady and as boring as a savings account. But a savings account does not come with us. There's an ongoing innuendo about private banking being a bit like prostitutes. It's fun, maybe it happens, but overall this is not the reality. But yes, it's a very deep relationship with the client. So in private banking, what's key is relationship services, but also a holistic approach. You don't just try to make them trade, you try to look at what's best for their overall state of affairs. That gives you a quick overview of different types of sales from brokers to let's call it structured sales to wealth manager, who's also a type of sales. And now we're ready to tackle the big deal of the Have beginning of season two. I love your shoes this block trade so stay tuned subscribe as we will be analyzing that in the next episode thank you the company is rican healthcare leader in the telemedicine